Burial Rites by Hannah Kent is a fictionalised account of the final year in the life of Agnes Magnus daughter, the last woman in Iceland to receive the death penalty for being an accomplice to a brutal double murder on the remote coastal farm where she worked as a maid for one of the murdered men. On March 14, 1828, Natal Kettleson, a farmer of Elagastadir, and Peter Jonsson, a former felon, were beaten and stabbed to death. The farm was then burnt down to hide the crime. One man and two women were convicted of the murder or of being accessories. Friedrich Sigurdsson, the son of a neighbouring farmer, and Agnes Mother's daughter, an impoverished workmaid and the protagonist of burial rites, were beheaded in January 1830 for their part in the crimes, while the third person convicted, a teenage maid, won a reprieve. Burial rites begin some months after Agnes's conviction, when Agnes has been transferred to work out her remaining days at Kornsa, the small farm of a minor government official. Ironically, Agnes's first memories are of Kornsa, where she was abandoned at the age of six by her mother, an unmarried servant working there. The farming couple running Kornsa at the time fostered her, and for two years Agnes was happy receiving love and a secret education from her foster mother, Inga. However, after Inga's death in childbirth, Agnes became a parish pauper, sent out as a servant to work for her keep around many of the farms in the valley. Now, more than two decades later, Agnes returns to Kornsa as a prisoner and is received with suspicion and reluctance by her custodial family, Jon Jonsson, his wife Margaret, and their two daughters, Lauga and Steiner. During the following months, the quiet, diligent Agnes proves her worth. She also reveals a background far more complicated than the basis on which she was convicted through a series of conversations told to the young cleric Totti, who's been directed to lead Agnes to the Lord in preparation for her death. Many of these conversations are overheard by Agnes's custodial family as it was the custom during this time in Iceland for family and servants to live and sleep in the same communal space called a budstoffer. When Agnes intervenes in a breech birth and saves the life of a neighbour and her baby, the respect she started to receive from her custodial family is cemented and their distress is genuine when the date of Agnes's execution is unexpectedly announced. As Agnes is taken unwillingly to the place of her execution, her family no longer see the condemned murderess who was brought to them, but a woman of strength and endurance, who lived a blameless life until her doomed love for the murdered Natal Kettleson led her to becoming his servant and ultimately his convicted slayer. In her real-life trial, Agnes was given little opportunity to put her side of the story and while Kent doesn't offer a justification for Agnes's part in the murders, she weaves a compelling tale of a misunderstood woman who is caught up by bad luck and circumstance in something that is, according to all evidence, against Agnes's character. <laughs>